Hello everyone and welcome to another live expert interview. My name is Lucy Challenger and I'm the CEO of Polo and Tweed and I am joined today by the very, very talented Claire Eddington. Hi Claire, how are you? I'm very well Lucy, how are you? Very well, thank you for asking. Now, Claire comes to us, we've known Claire for many years, and Claire comes to us as a very experienced and, and highly qualified house manager. Now, for lots of you tuning in, you might think, what's a house manager? What does that even mean? So perhaps, Claire, you could sort of bring everyone up to speed. Tell us a little bit about your background and, and what you actually do. Oh, of course. Um, Currently, I'm a house manager, but for 20 years uh, prior to that, I was actually in client services in the corporate environments. And within that role, I used to head up um, uh, services, i.e. Um, events, uh, help desk facilities, uh, reception, reservations, um, you name it, anything that had um, a customer flow uh, for it. Um, I got to um, my 40s and I decided that I wanted a career change. I had uh, a dinner um, one evening who, uh, with someone that was a house manager and they said that I would be ideal for the role. And I said, well, how could that possibly be? I work in corporate, these are private houses, but the skills are very transferable. So within a uh, private home to what you would have in um, a corporate building, um, you have exactly the same things. You have things that break down, which is the facilities. You have meet and greet because you have visitors. Uh, you have uh, the cleaning contracts and the homes need to be cleaned. So everything was transferable. Mm -hmm. But for me to round the whole uh, thing up, I actually attended a butler course for two weeks. Uh, where I got additional training so once I put that butler training on top of what I already had hey presto you have now a qualified house manager wow so obviously you, you came from a, a, a corporate background like you said and you used your transferable skills to take you into that line of work but you know for again people that are listening that might think well how does that apply to, to, to normal life you know in, in properties you may be faced with fully staffed households or you might be working in smaller teams how do you find that your skills and your background sort of impact on a day-to-day -day basis in, in as a house manager Oh, well, the two things, I mean, within uh, the work that I used to do before, I mean, I was always involved in HR, hiring and firing. Um, so, again, that's what you do in a private household. There, there was nothing from my background that I could not transfer over. In fact, it um, elevated it because I'd worked in such large properties, 7,000 uh, building uh, people building, that going into um, a smaller household with maybe 10 staff it was easy for me to naturally just step into that role so why as long as you have that previous background yeah. i do believe that it, it it's it, it's transferable yeah no no that makes total sense so but why does a property need a house manager what for, for again for those who are listening might think you know well i understand the role of a housekeeper i understand the role of a chef but but what 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 do you do in in terms of how do you play an integral part in the properties you work in Oh, it's absolutely imperative that you ha have a house uh, manager when you have teams and you have large houses. Yeah. Uh, the, the teams, um, you need someone to lead um, the dimensions of the house. You need someone to put in place uh, the, the cleaning schedules. You need to understand the schedules of the principal so uh, people can come and go uh, with uh, uh, as minimum interruption to the household as possible. Um, you become their PA, you become their eyes, you become um, everything think within that household you know it before they even really uh, know what's happening um, but you do need um, a prime uh, point of contact in order to, for all of those services to come together and things breaking houses they need cleaning as I say and that doesn't happen without someone uh, leading the way yeah yeah and, and, and you I mean you've touched on a number of things you've said you know running errands or sort of almost being that jack of all trades within the property to ensure that everything is always to the standards of the principal or the owner of the property so that must mean that you have to be highly flexible and highly adaptive because every day you know new things could come up to you that you have to react to so do you think it's a job that's suited to everyone can anyone be a house manager it's debatable um I have years of experience in um, in being a manager, um, so it's it's. Well, I didn't just I didn't just become a manager. I started from the bottom in in, in you know from a receptionist to reception supervisor and then going up. Yeah. I don't think it's for everyone. I think um, personality um, plays a big part. Mm. Um, I do feel that. Um, 
in a workplace uh, you can be more yourself whereas in a private home you have to adjust yourself to their household and their personalities mm. which you wouldn't normally find in a regular uh, type job so no I don't think it's for everyone but um, I'm one of those people that say give it a try <laughs> if you've got the relevant experience but um, no I do think you need the right personality you definitely need some form of either management and understanding of those services i.e catering and um, housekeeping yeah and you're right I think management a lot of people assume that management is easy um, and you know in my own business I manage people you know I manage the trainers that work for us and and management is a fine art because if you do it wrong you lose the you know kind of respect of your team you Absolutely. lose you lose their work ethic they won't work mm -hmm. with you hard you know they won't they won't commit to the job and that management approach is so key to being a house manager um but at the same time like you've mentioned you know you've got to have all those other skills you know if if chef's nights off and your principal wants a sandwich you know you step in and you make that sandwich and you know it's Thanks. that sort of can do attitude that might be quite bizarre for people to understand that you're managing on quite a senior level but then also doing perhaps more menial tasks like making a sandwich or running to the dry cleaners does does that make sense oh absolute sense um management or uh, no management um if the toilet needs to be cleaned the toilet needs to be cleaned people go sick people have holiday yeah. um and uh, for me i've had live in um positions hmm. um, and staff aren't 24 7 the house manager that lives in is 24 7 so when things go wrong or things are needed it is you even though you're at the management level yeah. so uh, it is making the sandwiches it is running to wait chose and picking up uh, uh, the yogurts and the fruit for breakfast um, it is you walking uh, the house to understand uh, where all the other sections come in be it a maintenance a gardener or the uh, the chauffeur um, so it's not as a manager you keep it all flowing and together but at the same time you have to step out of it and you need to change that bed with your housekeeping team and that gives you the respect alongside it yeah and i think you're right there's that that duality now in that modern household mm. yes you have the big big estates where they have the house manager just managing but like you say people are on holiday people are off sick you know for whatever mm. reason if you have to step in and help the housekeeper make the bed then well a it's going to make you a better manager because you can recognize how long the task actually takes other ways you can make it more effective for the people mm -hmm. working um and you can improve the systems right so it's it's oh. having that understanding Absolutely. Um, Lucy, I've never, uh, I've never worked as a chambermaid and I had never done any form of housekeeping, although I had run uh, uh, cleaning contracts. Mm -hmm. So I knew the fundamentals of running, uh, of managing a contract. But at the end of the day, I never knew how to make a bed. And had I not actually got down with the housekeepers and learned how to make a bed, I would never have been able to make it solo yeah when they weren't there yeah. so i wouldn't have been able to iron correctly i wouldn't have been able to uh, recognize what cashmere was and not what to put in the wash um so many different things i did not have any idea about and it was only working alongside um, the housekeeping team that i fundamentally realized how important and how much knowledge they have they're like gold dust when you find good ones yeah absolutely and i think that's been a, a sort of a key uh, explanation that I communicate when people are looking to enter the world of house management you know they come to perhaps us with strong house managing backgrounds and not in terms of you know properties but in terms of commercial properties mm -hmm. but unless they have that aptitude and desire to, to learn like you have with with learn how to housekeep learn how to do all these other things it's unlikely they'll be that successful because the modern household, like we've talked about, is that sort of multifaceted, you know, the children are hungry, we'll make them a snack and, you know, like all this stuff happening. But I think, you know, obviously discretion is, is a key aspect of working in domestic homes, working with high net worth families, VIP celebs, you know, all of that. You have to be very private about what you, what you've mm -hmm. seen. Now, without, you know, revealing any secrets to us. Could you share any funny or unusual stories or anything that you've experienced in your career that, that, that our listeners might enjoy hearing? So there's, there's hundreds, but there's a few that spring to mind. On my very first um, week um, as a house manager, 
um, for, for a very um, uh, known person. I did not know that people wore cashmere socks. I just did not know that. Um, I knew they had cardigans and jumpers, but I did not know they had socks. Now this gentleman had come back from travels and it was my first week. So, and I hadn't actually recruited any of the housekeeping uh, team. I was actually in process of the interviews. So I got his washing, I checked the labels, didn't think anything of it and threw the socks in with the shirts. They came out, this man had a size 13 foot. When those socks came out, they were a size one. Now I'm standing there, it's my first week and I wanted to die. I went, went online and I was, how much do cashmere socks cost? When I saw the cost and I'd shrunk seven pairs, I just thought, shall I just go up and resign now? And I thought, well, I can't lie. I can't hide this. I'm going to have to say something. So I spoke, rang the EA and I said, you'll, you'll never believe it. Even I can't believe my stupidity. I've just shrunk seven pairs of his cashmere socks. And she went, don't worry about it. She said, he'll never know. And I just, it just wouldn't sit with me. So I went up and I said, I'm very, very sorry, X, Y, um, but I've shrunk your cashmere socks now he found it hysterical I was mortified and thought I was going to be fired but nonetheless you know a tragic situation on cashmere <laughs> oh my gosh but, oh it was just the worst when I took them out of the washing machine I just couldn't believe my eyes but I didn't know you had cashmere socks Lucy I will never throw socks into a washing machine ever again without checking well, that is a very good tip for everyone listening who, who ever worked in a private home of, you know, perhaps affluence, that <laughs> cashmere socks do exist. And as do. cashmere should not go anywhere near the washing machine. If you hand wash all day long, Lucy, hand wash all day long. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, and to happen in your first week as well. How absolutely mortifying. I mean, I literally, I've never had heart palpitations. Like, I just couldn't understand what I'd done wrong to these socks. And it was only then that I realised they were cashmere. <laughs> you live and learn. It you sounds like you handled it very well. And, and uh, you know, I commend you. And this is a big thing to be honest and transparent with the people that Absolutely. you work for, you know, because hiding something is not a good way to have trust yeah. and honesty and, and form a good relationship. Because working in private homes is very different to working in a commercial setting. You know, trust is everything mm -hmm. and the second you lose that trust um you lose the respect you lose your job you know it's it's quite simple um Absolutely. And, and to progress in your career you have to do that but you know you part of your job being flexible flexible and expecting to do this huge array of duties you know how do you deal with that sort of continual request to being reactive to be flexible and, and maybe being asked unusual things to do that wouldn't necessarily fall in day-to-day -day routine how do you cope with that with each um with each day and with each subject that's brought up um you could be asked to do the most random of things um unless it's morally not correct you just get on and do it. Um, these are people's personal homes and you have to appreciate that um, if you step back and think about your own home, uh, you need someone that will keep your secrets, always be honest and upfront, don't try to hide things, blend into the background as much as you can when um, you're not, you really shouldn't be visible and have the, the, the utmost of discretion, even when it comes to talking to your friends and family. Um, you, you don't go around talking about people's personal life as you would not want anyone to talk about your own. Yeah, and that's how I, um, how I step um, into the role very um, easily because I appreciate privacy um, and it is not my business to um, discuss anything that happens within a, in a household. Yeah, yeah, no, and that's fundamental because it goes back to the discretion, it goes back to the respect, it goes back to the trust and, mm -hmm. and you are sharing information with, you know, it could just be a casual comment on social media, it could be of course. Uh, anything that you think is not necessarily uh you know uh, taking away from that trust but your principal your your boss mm -hmm. would see that as a, a breaking of their privacy and um, absolutely and lucy people sometimes don't even realize they're doing it mm -hmm. um intentionally but i mean i uh, know of uh, one house manager where they took uh, photographs of the home that they were working in and put them on social media now they did not think there was anything wrong in there but this is someone's personal home i mean in in those photos you see backgrounds you see pictures you know it, it's not um, it's not for sharing so you have to be very discreet there's no um, social 
social media, no unnecessary emails and no unnecessary conversations. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. So if, if someone's listening to this and thinking that they'd really like to go into this world of house management, or maybe they're already working in domestic world to begin with and want to sort of work up the career ladder, or they want to take a sideways step like you did from, you know, commercial management into more domestic management do you think training's important you know what would be your advice for someone looking to to, to work in this industry training's um uh, imperative i mean as i said earlier on in uh, in in this link the i went on a butler course yeah. uh, where i learned uh, flower arranging i learned um how to get people on and off a, a private uh, jet how to get people on and off a yacht mm -hmm. um there are things that um depending on what your principal has in his world uh, even to classic cars so you know how to make a canopy at short short notice these think flower arranging is a lot harder than people actually think. It's not just grabbing some flowers and putting them in a vase. Um, it's how you display them, how many times you update the water, uh, refresh the water. So for me, training, if I can get um, additional training all the way through my career, it's, um, it's imperative, as is um, anything that's on technology. You know, uh, smart systems in the house, the TVs, are, you know, Apple TVs. Um, you know, I don't have an Apple TV. If I didn't go online and get that kind of training, I would look um, as though I was incapable of doing my job. Yeah. And these online training sessions, um, they can actually help you um, benefit your, your principal and the home. So I'm all go training. <laughs> <laughs> and it sounds like, you know, you, you took from that training and continue to train now, you know, continually yes. because security and digital technology changes and there yes. are new ways of changing and updating and making sure that you're doing it in the most efficient and mm -hmm. practical way for the property that you're in um, and, and we have a lot of you know staff that are in the domestic world staff that aren't that want to get into it coming to us for training and you know we have our house management course which is hugely popular because you know anyone can do it from the principals and the owners of the properties themselves because they want to know how to do better budgets or inventory or uh -huh. fire and fire staff and all of this stuff or you know the, the staff themselves like like yourself that are working in it that want to refresh or get that leg in into that industry in the first place and of course now with the world pandemic that we're in yes. and you know sort of as it were all locked down into our house digital and e-learning has become at the forefront because people might have a bit of time but equally they can't travel they can't come to us in london they can't do the training you know do you think there's a place for e-learning with with these types of things or does it always have to be in person no, absolutely not. We're having this uh, conversation. We do not need to be face to face, and it's just as effective as if I was sitting in 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 the office with you. Yeah. So, e-learning, um, online learning is an absolute. It means you can learn it at your own time in your own in your own environment, and um, because um, as you'll know, in the uh, in private households, uh, time is. Um, it's hard to fit anything in other than what you're doing and they can be long hours so to think that you can step outside of your job and go for a, a, an hour training course is just impossible so for me to have it online where I can do it in my downtime yeah is the only way to go forwards because um, you don't or you haven't got time yeah yeah no that and that's it and that's why a lot of people are coming to us for the e-learning because they can do it in their own time and they can do it when you know they're off duty in the evenings or perhaps at the weekends um, and they have that flexibility over their own learning which mm -hmm. i think regardless of whether we're in a lockdown or not it's yeah. it's quite an exciting way to control your own career and your own education you you, you know you, you are in control of it which um mm -hmm. i think lo a lot of people like to feel <laughs> when it comes absolutely to and as you say things are changing daily and uh, without um online e-learning then um you're not keeping up and um if you're lacking, you can't progress. You can't go into a more modern house. Um, uh, you, you, you just can't get through it. So uh, no, absolutely. Um, training is beneficial at all times, even for uh, someone like me who thinks they know it all, Lucy. <laughs> We're never too old to learn more things. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> like even if it's just a tiny thing that makes our life easier in our working environment, yes. you know, why not, you know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> But you know, Claire, this has been such a, such a fab chat and I hope for everyone who's tuned in that they've, they've seen an insight into the world of what a house manager does, why it's important and plays an integral part in a lot of properties and, and, and venues around the world. So of course, Claire, 
is a, a member of the Polo and Tweed Agency. She, she is a fabulous candidate on our book. So if anyone's listening to this and wants A, to speak to Claire or wants to have some more advice or indeed wants to talk to Claire about, you know, how they could manage their houses better, um, then we can, of course, put you in touch with Claire. So just, just come over to us and, um, at Polo and Tweed and, you know, we, we can connect you. But Claire, I really appreciate the time you've taken out. No problem at all. With me. It's been Thank really Thank you. Fun. <laughs>